In this video, I want to illustrate how compound interest works and see how to derive the standard formula for finding the future value of a compounded interest account. All right, so let's suppose that we have uh, $1,000 here that's placed in an account that's going to be compounded annually here at uh, 10%. Okay, so let's see what happens to this, this money. We can actually uh, here we'll put the thousand dollars in and then we'll have here's the interest in each period and maybe our balance over here so we can keep track of this like a bank statement so if we put our time zero in here we uh, don't have any interest because as soon as we give the money to the bank they're not going to hand us some interest so our balance at that time is just going to be a thousand dollars so let's look at year one here. okay so we've had the uh well that's right the remaining years out here too so I see how much space I've got okay so what is the interest we get in the first year well it's going to be compounded annually so the interest on the first year is just going to be like the simple interest formula it's going to be a thousand times the rate which is 10 percent times one so that's going to be a hundred dollars so interest will be a hundred dollars here so our total balance is going to be $1,100. Okay, now let's take a look at what happens in the second year. Well, the way compounding works, since the bank is now using our full amount here, $1,100, during this second year, it's going to have to pay us interest on this full amount. It's going to be more than the $100 that would have come out if we were just compounding things simply. So the interest here is going to be the $1,100 times 0.1. So that's going to be $110. So here is the balance becomes the base that's used to calculate the interest. So we can add our 110 to this, and we see we get uh, 1210 as our interest, as our balance there. We've got $210. Uh, what happens in year three? Again, well, year three here, the bank is using the entire 1210 that is now in our account for the one year. And so it's going to have to pay us 10% interest on that. And so that calculates out to be $121. So we can add this to the balance. And we find that the account now has uh, $1,331. And again, if we do this for the fourth year, what is our interest going to be? It's going to be uh, $1,331 times 0.1, which comes out to be $133.10, which when we add to the current balance is going to give us uh, $1,464.10. Now, notice this is going to be uh, somewhat more than if it was just a simple interest type of account. If it had been simple interest, then the interest would have been 1,000 times 0.1 times 4. So, and we saw this was 100, and so we would have gotten just uh, uh, $400. We come out with an extra $64 and some pennies there. Now, uh, when banks are uh, going to calculate this, they usually don't use uh, annual compounding right here. Compounding is usually done things like monthly, quarterly, daily. You know, and so this could become quite a pain if I wanted to figure out what my balance would be for $1,000 if it was going to be compounded daily because in one year I'd have to go through this type of uh, addition here 365 times and, and that's going to be a lot of work. So what we want is a formula so we can identify this future value down here in one sort of computational step without worrying about all the in-between steps. So let's analyze this a little bit. So how did we get this original uh, after one year? Well, and we're going to then build it up here at a time. So notice that was obtained by taking the $1,000 and adding the $100 interest, which was just 0.1. So this is just going to be uh, $1,000 times 1.1. 1 
Okay, now what happened in the second year here? So we took our original, our 1210 was going to be the original $1,100, which I'll write in this awkward way of 1,000 times 1.1, and we were going to add to that this uh, $110, which was going to be the same expression times 10%, because we were going to take the previous balance here and the new interest was going to be 10% of that. And so how do we combine that to make it look a little more readable? Well, notice there's a common factor here. Okay, so I can factor out that common factor. This is just going to be 1,000 times 1.1. And now what happens? When I factor that out, I can combine these two terms, and this is just going to give me a 1 plus 0.1. Now, notice what happens here. If I do that, this is just 1.1 if I add that together. So I've actually got two copies of this. So instead of writing it down twice, I can just square this. So this is a little neater way of writing this expression than what I had before with all those addition symbols in there. Okay, let's look at year three. How did I get the 1331? Well, I took this... Uh, result from year two, which was now written as a thousand times 1.1 squared, and I'm going to have to add 10% of that. So I take a thousand times 1.1 squared times 0.1, and what can I do? Well, just about what I did before, here's this common factor, which I can factor out, and I get a thousand times 1.1 squared times what's left. Well, I've got the 1 times 1 plus uh, 0.1, which is 1.1. And so what can I do with that? Well, I can do just like I did before. This is the same term as that, except there's two of them here and one there. So I can replace the 2 by the 3. Now, you can probably see the pattern there. Where would my final balance come out to be here? Well, it should be 1,000 times 1.1 to what power? Well, at the end of year one, it was power one. At the end of year two, it was two. At the end of year three, it was three. So this should be a four. Now, we should should try and, and check that out. So go check it out. Let's, I can't do that in my head too well. So let me come out and do a get a calculator here and see what we can do with that. Uh, let's turn it on. And then we'll put in a thousand times 1.1 raised to the fourth power, and what do we come out with? Well, very good, 1464.10, exactly what I, I got when I actually did through the calculation by hand. So in fact, that is the formula that does work in that, that case. Well, so this gives the formula in this case. Now, what about the general formula? How can I find the future value if I change this to like, 365 uh, periods or something like that uh, daily. Well, where did these numbers come from? Well, where did the 1,000 come from? Well, the 1,000 came from the initial deposit up here. So that was going to be the principal. Okay, and then where did the 1.1 come from? Well, the 1 plus, and my annual rate was going to be compounded annually, so the rate per period, we'll just say, let R be the rate per period here. So this is the rate per period. So if it had been monthly, I would have had to take 10% and divide by 12. Okay, and then the four here was what? The four was gonna be the total number of compounding periods. We'll write that as N. And so this is the number of compounding periods. Total. Okay, so there we see. We see how the uh, we derive this formula here for the future value of uh, a compounded account. Thanks for uh, watching the video.